Hi programmers, and welcome to another Plus One software video. I'm Ellie Zeno, and I'm a technical trainer at Danfoss Power Solutions. Jonas Lindholm made all the lovely screen captures and edits, and we were able to make this video together from across the globe. Our team was so excited to share some news with you, and give you some helpful tips and tricks for a brand new feature in Plus One Service Tool, the Virtual Breakout Board. So what is the Plus One Virtual Breakout Board, or the VBB? The Virtual Breakout Board is a new feature in Plus One software that allows you to execute your Plus One Guide application in a virtual environment on your PC when you don't have or you don't want to use any physical Plus One hardware, any controllers or displays, etc. There is absolutely no need to connect to physical hardware in order to use it. The VBB was released in version 2022.3 of Plus One Guide and Service Tool. Version 2022.3 is a new release that's available on the Plus One Update Center. Be sure to check out our video on the Update Center if you have any more questions on that. I'll get into some of the details on how the Virtual Breakout Board works and some use cases, but first we have to talk about the new Virtual DM430 features. Plus One Guide now has an updated skin simulation mode and new skins for the DM430. With these new skins, we have access to a new feature. We can now emulate pushing the physical buttons on the DM430 display. Just click with your mouse and the system under test display will react accordingly to the digital inputs as it would on your physical display. And now the LEDs will light up on your virtual DM430 if your Plus One application uses them. So throw some lights in your application, give it a try. As a note, there is currently a bug for the DM430 skins that does not allow for the virtual emulation of the amber LED. However, the red and green LEDs work as intended. The other constraints to the virtual LED feature is that it is currently only available for the Plus One applications that use the latest hardware definition file for the DM430 display only. And that's gonna be version 170 or later. If you need a bigger screen for your display applications, keep an eye out for the next release of the DM1000 and DM1200 HWDs because they're expected to have the same features. Run multiple instances of system under test at a time. First, please always start with a compilable Plus One Guide application. When compiling your Plus One Guide project for debugging, while you can only debug one application at a time, you can run multiple system under test instances by executing the exe file in the debug folder for that application. For most applications, you will only see the command window, which shows basic information about the current system under testing. However, for display applications, you will not only see the command window, but also the system under test viewer with the skin you selected in the plus one guide design. It looks and works just like a DM430. Currently, the description of the system under test viewer is the same for all applications, but keep an eye out for updates to the descriptions in future releases. The virtual breakout board is actually a special instance of the plus one service tool. If the service tool is started in virtual mode, it will connect to the system under test application running on your PC. Create your own VBB application. There are some guidelines for creating new VBB applications. A VBB application needs to be created with the service tool running in virtual mode. That means you must have a device under test running to get access to the inputs and outputs in the service tool design. It's not possible to use a service tool application created in online or offline mode for the virtual mode, or conversely, to use a service tool application created in virtual mode for use in a non-virtual mode. I will be referring to service tool applications created in virtual mode as VBB applications, since that's basically what they are. You can create and use VBB applications in virtual mode, but any plus one applications that were created in either online or offline mode cannot be used in virtual mode or as VBB applications. 
If you want to reuse the design from a non-virtual service tool application to use for your VBB application, we recommend using the import and export page feature in the service tool. Let's take a quick look at how to export a page in service tool and how to import a page in another instance of service tool running in virtual mode. Be sure to change the application ID to something meaningful when you copy your projects. Because the application name listed in the virtual CAN gateway is the application ID, which is the one that you can edit in Plus One Guide by going to Project Manager, and under Service Tool Data, click on the application ID. Under the Inspector and in the Description field, you can update it to a more meaningful name for you. Rename the application ID to something that makes more sense for you and include the hardware type. The new Plus One Virtual CAN Gateway is a component that is started when the software under test unit starts. Here we can see that there are two applications, DM430 Node 23 and DM430 Node 24. Both of them are on virtual channel zero. We can also see in this case, we have an instance of service tool connected to the virtual gateway to monitor one of the virtual channels. So what is happening here? How does this work? Because of the way that the service tool, while in virtual mode, connects to the VBB application using a special bus or channel created on your PC called the P1 instrument bus, you can view and control internal variables by using set values, checkpoints, and more. It works pretty similarly to how it did in earlier versions of the Plus One service tool. But the best feature here is the ability to control the physical input and output pins from the device without ever having to change your Plus One Guide code or hold any late night debugging sessions. For exactly the same application that earlier you had to debug on your PC, then download to the physical hardware, and then connect the unit to service tool with a CG150 gateway connector or something similar, it's so much faster to just use the VBB. Think of the virtual channel like a CAN bus or a bundle of wires in a wire tray. The four virtual channels that are available on the new virtual breakout board are emulating four CAN buses. If you double click on the virtual channel in the virtual CAN gateway, you can change the channel the application is communicating on. You can also connect to any of your virtual channels, as you can see here. For an example of how to use the VBB, please go to our YouTube channel and search for the video number 102, VBB, the dual path example. I'm going to talk about some use cases next, and I'll use the dual path example to demonstrate these. First use case. You have to debug a plus one guide application. Debugging can help with code that's not working as intended. Maybe your code isn't executing with the right time loop delay and you want to do a little troubleshooting, but the only physical hardware is at the office or on site, or maybe it's next to your desk. That's okay. There's one next to mine too. You can use virtual mode to debug your plus one guide application by first setting a breakpoint in your code. 
Once you start running your application, you can emulate it with signals, both from the virtual breakout board as well as from the physical display. Enter some values in the value column, and then continue to debug your application. Once you find the sequence of inputs that trigger the breakpoint, then you can continue debugging in guide as you could in the previous versions. Second use case, you have to debug a plus one display application. Your display isn't showing up correctly or not displaying the proper values and you want it fixed, but you don't want to put on your shoes, go all the way out to the truck and get your display. Using the virtual breakout board, you can essentially perform all the same types of tests that you might want to perform on your physical display if you had it available, such as graphical debugging. It's a really easy way to check what your display will look like on the DM430. You can also press all of the buttons on the DM430 skin to see how your code reacts and emulate input to the application. For the best performance in graphical debugging, we do recommend running the system under test exe file. This can be found in the debug folder. The third use case is debugging a plus one service tool application. Instead of connecting the physical display via a CG150 to connect it to service tool, it just works. Here we use the VBB input and output and DM430 screen input and output to emulate the application and see if the VBB application works as intended. Debugging a system is a combination of all three of the previous use cases. Here, I would like to highlight the debugging of the CAN buses and the messages that they send to each other. So the focus here is more on the whole system or the dependencies of the surrounding system compared to when we only debug a single unit. We really hope this video was helpful. If you still have questions, we have an active community on the Plus One user forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com. Or you can contact the Plus One help desk with your questions using the web form at plusonehelpdesk.danfoss.com. For more tips and tricks on Plus One software, check out more of our videos and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and happy programming.